Hey, what's up, guys? Brian Savage here with you. Hello. Got you on Skycam. Today, back up on the bench, I have The Bad Dog by Washburn Wah. And as you can see, I've got all the components out of it. We went over how to do that. Put them on your handy dandy little box. And uh, show you what I'm going to do. When I spoke last time, I misspoke. I uh, had to do some more research. Last time I said that it was this capacitor C6 at 220 nanofarads or that one was the capacitor, the sweep capacitor to change it to a base wall was incorrect. It's located more in that direction on the other crybaby circuit board as you can see even though it said washburn on it. Right there you can see right on the PCB. Cry baby. <laughs> Oddly enough. But this is shaped different and the components are the same, but they're laid out different. So it is actually the one I have to change is C5. And I put a little purple mark on top of it so it'll be hard to read. But it is uh, 100 nanofarad. Or I guess it'd be 10 because it's three numbers in a row. But um, that is the one that I'm going to change. And. I listened to it and it wasn't as trebly as what I thought it was. I got a bass line. So the suggested for the bass wall is 68 and I'm sure you probably won't be able to read that. I have to get out my little spectacle myself to read it sometimes. So, uh, But 68 is the suggested. Um, I don't know, but that is with a regular CGB95, so I'm not sure if it's going to have to be that much. So I also have, might be able to read this one. No, no I don't think it's going to like it. But anyway, it's a 47, and a 33, and a 27. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try the 68 first, and if that, you know, is too bassy, um, then maybe I'll drop to the 47. If I'm still not liking it, I can go to the 33 or all the way down to the 27. Uh, it's a 10 that's in there now. So, uh, without further ado, we got the iron hot. Little set of tweezers. And I want to also slightly, well, bend it quite a bit, but very easily and gently. We're going to Q, oh, what is that Q number? Q2. We're going to move Q2 out of the way. Pay close attention. We're going to go in here and we should see three and then two. So we look in here, see three. This has three legs, this has two legs, so if we flip it over and we trace right back, we see three legs, then we see the two legs, okay? So, I'm going to hold the capacitor with my tweezers and get myself in a position where I can hold it and just put some slight pressure on it, pulling pressure. Most of it up. Yeah, these things are a little too flimsy for this. That's good for resistors, but it's not too good for this capacitor. So let's try a different one here. Paying attention again, make sure we're doing the right one. It sounds simple, guys, but I've pulled the wrong one before. Okay, so let's see if I can get some of that purple off of it. I still doubt you'll be able to read it because, man, it is tiny, tiny. There's the capacitor we pulled. Wow. Now since this is a robbed component, got a little bit of solder on it here. Since it's a robbed component, it's got some really short legs on it, so I can't even reach in there with my fingers. These little tiny little things. Let's 
Let's line these up a little better. It's a little narrower. And let's see, get them poked through the holes here. seated down on the board. And this lug here has quite a bit of solder on it. Now what I'm doing here is making sure I haven't made any solder joints where I don't want them. Got to be careful with that. So I'm looking here. like I'm in the safe zone with that all right now I'm gonna have to put a little dab on that ah oh, the only solder I got in here is this great big old stuff but it should do the trick and I think this is the boring parts of the videos and usually I don't record this part but People asked. I got a little much on there. Remember, solder follows heat. There we go. That makes sure we don't have any bridges, any gaps between the runs. Right there we go. All soldered in there. Component solid. Reassembly time. Reassembly, I do it in the reverse order. So we plug it in first. And little tip the board, this casing narrows as it goes down. So if you go farther than what you should. And then slide it down into place. So put it farther in and slide it down to where it lines up. <clears throat> now we're going to put these in by hand and just get them, line them up and get them started. We're not going to tighten them because it's a lot easier to do once while the board's still loose in there to line these up and just hand get them going. That's all we're going to do. There, didn't even snug them down. Then we're going to put the screw in, give it a snug, and then we'll snug down the jacks. Again, 17, 7 16 socket. And just tighten them down. Like this, snug them down. And uh, we're going to leave the back plate. We're going to leave it off of it. I do have the feet on it so it keeps it up off the th off the ground. I ain't worried about a battery. I'm going to plug it in directly. And there you go. Shazam, it was that easy. Now I'm going to go give it a sound test and uh, see how it ends up. Again, we may end up changing this back out with a lower value. Um, like I said, I got a 47, a 33, and a 27 lined up ready to go. I got the 100 out, or the 10 out with no uh, no problems, so we need to put that back in there and just take it back to stock we can. Guys, when you're doing this stuff, remember, a little heat goes a long way, a little solder goes a long way. Take your time, don't get frustrated, share the music, share the love, peace out.